We're going to be making this really cool metallic 3D chrome effect on top of an image that's been trending nowadays. This effect grew in popularity after this futuristic aesthetic called Cybercore took storms in the high fashion, K-pop, and even TikTok and Snapchat AR filters. It's normally done in this 3D program called Blender, but if you're lazy like me, I'm going to be showing you how to do it in good old fashioned Photoshop. So let's get to it. So I have opened up Adobe Illustrator and this is where we're going to start designing and drawing on the objects and futuristic aesthetics on top of the image. I have here a photo by an awesome photographer called Laura Jade who does a lot of high fashion photo shoots and on the left hand side we have a bunch of inspirations of this type of style of what we're going to draw on and I'm really digging on the top left hand corner this butterfly organic metallic shape that we could gain inspiration from and kind of duplicate so we're going to grab the paintbrush tool and start painting in organically around the face just to see how that looks and what's cool about Adobe Illustrator is you can always go back because these are vectors to change mimic and fine tune the shape really easily we're gonna add some dots around to give it that organic feel and one important tip is to make sure that after you draw the vectors to join the lines together because a lot of the times when you do a paintbrush they don't end up becoming like filled objects because there's a gap in between the lines so there's two ways to do it all you need to do is either press the object you could do a left click or control tap on your trackpad and it'll give you a panel and you just press join or you could grab the pen tool and click on one point to the next to join them together manually and then we're going to do that for all the rest of the shapes that we like and we're just going to keep on adding crazy and fun shapes on top of this image to give it that cyber core aesthetic that all these mood board references has and i'm really digging this nose piece from this mood board so we're just going to draw that in I'm gonna be drawing some thorns on the left and right cheek, that long part area, just to give it more of an insecty, organic creature feel to it. So after we have that looking good, we're gonna Command C, copy this Illustrator vector, hover into Photoshop, and then Command V it so it places on top of this image. Let's size it to the proportions of how we like it. It doesn't have to be perfect because we could always edit that in the 3D effect panel. So before we do anything, this is a really important part. Make sure that you have a lot of memory in your computer, at least like 20 gigabytes of free storage because this does take a lot of memory. Also, go to Photoshop Preference. Let's click on Technologies Previews and make sure that the Deactivate Native Canvas is checked. That's a really important part because if not, the 3D effect won't show up properly. Also, go to Performance and make sure that the Use Graphic Processor is checked if not already. Sometimes it'll be grayed out, which is okay as long as it's checked. After we have that completed, what we're going to do is open up the 3D panel. So you could go to Windows 3D. It's going to give you this panel with three different options. What we want to hit is the middle, the 3D extrusion. Hit that and press create. Sometimes when you hit create, it's going to give you this box with an error. That means that you don't have enough memory. So make sure to clean your computer and delete some unnecessary large format files. Restart Photoshop and then this effect should work. So once we hit create, it's going to give you all of these different tools and mechanics. So what we want to do next is click on 3D design and make sure that the properties window is open. Just go to windows and click properties and it show up and make sure to uncheck catch shadows and cast shadows. Let's also set the extrusion depth to zero and then let's click on the second icon. Everything is looking good. Let's not change anything there. So this area is really important. The third icon section. What we want to do is on for the contours, we're going to click on the curved area and for strength, we're going to hit 15% angle. We're going to do 80 degrees and then make sure that the sides are front and back. And you can see already after making these inputs that it changed a lot. It feels more rounded and organic and kind of almost slimy, which is a good sign. Next up is the textures and materials, which is the really important part. What we want to do is go to 3D panel, click on 3D design front inflation material. In the properties tab, it should change and form into this area where we could play with the material. On the sphere bubble, we're going to down click that arrow and scroll down to make sure to click on this checkered pattern. Once we click on that, it's going to give us an option where we can input an image itself. Scroll down, there's going to be an environmental tab. We're going to click on that icon and hit edit texture. And it's going to give us this checkered pattern. And what I like to do first is just to add in the 
the same image that we have just to have a test and a good foundation of what the colors can be so we're gonna command save it and go to the other tab to see what it looks like updated and as you can see it's really bright so we're gonna go back to the texture tool on the other tab and just darken the image itself so then it's not so blown out and so bright and then command save it update and go back to the original image as you can see the darker we make it the more that the color brings out and the, the organic shapes start to appear and some nice details and all you need to do is just keep playing with it editing both the image and also the properties levels to get it to the aesthetic that you like as you can see i'm starting to go back to the texture image i'm moving it ever so slightly updating it and seeing how much that drastically changed the overall aesthetic of this material but even just moving this image to the right more you can see that the color changed a lot and also the reflections and the dark areas really play around and see where it goes and how you like it it's all about trial and error and seeing what kind of color lighting and shadow combination you like the most so i'm going to go back to the properties tab start editing it pushing some of the roughness and starting to play with the materials and seeing where that goes i think it's looking really solid the last thing of what we want to do to really tie it in and make it feel like that blender 3d effect is to add a drop shadow which is really important and it will make this style come alive so what we want to do is duplicate this 3d design and then let control click it or left click it hover over and click on rasterize layer make sure that this layer is below the design that we want and then we're gonna hit layer layer style and go all the way down to drop shadow make sure that's clicked and we're gonna set the levels in a place that we like let's make sure that the color is a medium gray let's put the opacity to 55 percent and nudge the angle to be around 140 degrees the distance 35 pixels spread is zero percent and size is 24 pixels to give it that nice natural look that's a bit elevated from her face next up what we want to do is we see some drop shadow on the left area that should be gone it's a bit distracting because it's not landing on her face but it's casting a shadow in thin air but what we want to do is put the mask tool let's click below the layers panel there's going to be a circle inside of a rectangle let's click on that let's grab the brush tool make sure you click on the mask box and start coloring in the unneeded cast shadows to make it feel like this block is only on her face and not around and just paint away all of that unnecessary shadows on the left side so that's looking really nice after doing the hard part of getting the shadow on and the materials you like you could input all different types of materials inside to get another different fresh style you like so I'm going to show you how different a textured image can change this object effect itself on the right hand side I have a, just a bunch of random images this one's a hotel room I'm just going to drag that in just darken it a bit more so then it looks like how we want to color wise command save that go back to our panels and it drastically changed this object and it looks more chrome and metallic and it has more of a silver white gold look to it next up we have is this rendered image of a castle it looks like a game we're gonna lower the brightness command save it and as you can see it, it made it a totally different color and the shading is way different too and i'm really digging this one as well and it totally matches the overall color of this image which is a nice surprise and then the last image we're gonna put in it looks like an indoor house with some nice bright windows I'm gonna darken that command save that that one looks much more wider and almost like a pearl style so definitely play around with this and there's all these different unique styles that you have as long as you set up the textures and the drop shadow to how you like it this effect will do really well in and that's it guys this was the quick 3d metallic chrome effect on top of the image similar to blender that we did in photoshop hope you guys dig this tutorial and excited to see what you guys come up with thanks again always for watching and have a great rest of your day peace